Very good evening. I welcome you all to the Dare Act Conversation series powered by the Grey Matter. Our guest for today is a very versatile personality. He's a former lawyer, corporate lawyer uh, turned entrepreneur. Uh, so let's invite Satyam Sincheti and hear all about his exciting journey. Hi, Shreya. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah, very excited. Thank you, thank you uh, for uh, the invite. But we are we are more excited because it's a finale episode of Dare Act 2020, and you're our finale guest. So yeah. Oh, that's great! <laughs> I feel very lucky. You'll surely finish with the bank. No, no, but uh, yeah, absolutely, and thank you so much for coming on this live chat with us. So shall we get started? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you hear me clearly? absolutely loud and clear perfect so you come from a business background with you know your family business has pretty much been in the industry of textiles and handicrafts uh, what and who inspired you to choose law so so uh, as i come though i come from a business background i always had this in my mind that i wanted to do something of my own something different and that's when i i i used to follow my cousins who were all nlu uh, pass outs and uh, were all working in tier 1 firms so this sort of attracted me towards law and also i uh, since childhood i loved to argue so i i therefore chose law as my calling and everybody in the house was okay with you being a lawyer yeah they supported me actually because something uh, daring something new i was doing in the house so wonderful and so you know how was your transition from jodhpur to bombay how was that transition for you and uh, it'll be great if you could share a little bit about your college experience sure so you know as and when i decided to do law uh, i gave that was the obvious calling i i gave my clat and unfortunately i did not make it to any of the nlus uh, but in the hindsight it, it was a good decision that i got into glc i got much independence and then i had to sort of move from a tier 3 city to the world of tier 1 city which surely seemed very glamorous uh, at the outset but when i went to bombay the story was entirely different i was welcomed by overwhelming rains and uh, there was a lot of struggle and because i came from a i, I come from a joint family background uh, where i did not have to take care of my expenses or be independent it was surely a challenging thing but it was a necessary challenge and uh, that's when i started law and i i, I you know loved the process i did my internships i pursued parallel courses i did many moot courts i participated in uh, a lot of events uh, and uh, it was a very wholesome journey for me hmm. wonderful and tell us so you practice corporate and securities law how did you uh, narrow down to that niche so uh, one of the perks of being in glc uh, government law college mumbai is that you can intern all year round and we all have done it and therefore it it gave me a chance to intern in different fields so i started with corporate law then i uh, interned in litigation only to know that these are not my my cup of tea and somewhere in the third year i i i started interning in securities law and i loved the uh, i i loved the research part of it and i loved the securities part of it and that's when i thought that you know i i found my calling and and that's where you started practicing as a securities lawyer as well yes and exactly so so you found your calling you enjoyed your work now let's get to the ground reality when did the entrepreneurial bug bite you right uh, before that you know uh, i would like to tell you one incident that is in my mind uh, from my college times uh, so uh, it's it's kind of a, a moment where i thought that it was something of an accomplishment although small so in my second year uh i represented my college in nani palki wala moot court competition and uh, that's when you know when you participate in a moot you are given um, you you're given couple of mentors who are in the final year or who are sort of you know pass out and that's when i thought i saw them i saw them guiding us and i was like uh, i want to be that this 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 kind of a person um few years down the line 
uh, in in five years down the line, uh, when I was working as a lawyer, somebody approached me uh, that if you could be a mentor. That's when uh, you know I uh, it took me back to 2012, and it was one of the aha moments for me, and it was it, it was something that you know it. Although small, it felt like an accomplishment. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, so that was an accomplishment, and um, you were enjoying the work that you were doing. So now, tell us when did the entrepreneurial bug bite you? So I was uh, in two thousand seventeen uh, when I was uh, in uh, in my uh, full fledged securities law lawyer mode, and it was sort of a promising career also. But somewhere down the line, I thought that there was a entrepreneurial bug in me. and that's when i thought that 5 uh, years down the line if i would continue as a lawyer it might not uh, i might regret it somewhere down the line and that's when i thought that uh, let me just take a sabbatical for 2 3 months and uh, let me just explore the entrepreneurial side in me that's when i came to my hometown and my mother she's a qualified yoga professional and i thought that i always wanted to set up a studio for her and i came in and i pitched this idea to her it was very difficult to uh, convince them uh, so this was my first task as an entrepreneur to convince the promoter who are uh, very well my parents to set up a studio there was an initial resistance but uh, it all worked out in the end and then we set up a, a, a studio and 3 years down the line it has become a premier yoga studio in uh, in in my city wow and it started out of basement is it yeah it started out of basement uh, with the three with three clients three initial clients wow so apart from winning the challenge of convincing your promoters to invest in this business idea um, did it give you the clarity and confidence that you were seeking yes absolutely i think it was uh, it was an initial start there were fair share of challenges and because of these challenges i thought that i need some formal training that's when i joined my uh, family business uh, for uh, for taking for, for taking some training and knowing the tricks and trades of business four five months down the line when i did my training i found my calling i was introduced to the world of fmcg sector and i was very intrigued by the creativity and the fast paced and the growth involved in the business and that's when i met uh, th- that's when i met a person very energetic person who was a local distributor of rice and uh, i want to i pitched an idea just uh, just by the way of a talk i pitched an idea that let's let's start let's get you exporting you have the money i have the business expertise let's uh, start export and 3 years down the line when we joined our hands uh, uh, anvi exim that is his uh, export business it is now the uh, premier uh, government recognized export house of our city wonderful and where all does it export rice now uh, we, we we export all over the world uh, mainly in middle east uh, parts of australia uh, europe and mainly uk wow and uh, and what did this experience like what did that experience what did you gain out of that experience so it was completely transformational experience 3 years in this field uh, i i faced so many challenges i learned the art of collaboration i learned the art of teamwork i represented my company in various uh, world food exhibitions it sort of bought me uh, bought my entrepreneurial skills to the fore and they were tested many times and it was a very enriching process and especially when you did it all by yourself Pushed yeah yourself Wonderful. That's the and essence of entrepreneurship. And what what led to it? What was next? Yeah. So um, while I was representing my company uh, in various uh, food exhibitions, uh, I, I saw that this uh, this world is changing, and uh, it's it's going more global. And uh, sort of big data analytics, artificial intelligence. This is the way to go. Now, uh, the obvious course of action for me. would be to do a global mba and to imbibe those skills which sort of puts me in an advantageous position to grow in this field uh, in, in in a very fast manner and that's when i thought that uh, i i should apply to a global mba an international mba and imbibe those skills and start my journey accordingly uh, i applied last year i applied to manchester business school uh, and i got through it and uh, and and in december and i am leaving for uh, this uh, journey that's amazing and we wish you all the best for your new for your future endeavors thank you so um, much 
but but tell us uh, you know you got through and then the pandemic hit and um, in a city like jodhpur which is fairly laid back um you went ahead with a few good friends and you know successfully built a community of runners which is now popularly called as the jodhpur runners um how did that idea come about yeah so i think in, in during march the pandemic had hit and because of that our uh, our program got postponed by 6 months uh during lockdown i i started gaining weight and i start eating and sort of my lifestyle was uh, was not that good in the month of june of 2020 uh, i i thought that this is it i need to start working out and that's when i uh, met my long lost friend that is running and i started running i just put on my shoes and i started running slowly gradually i thought that i i got bored i got bored running and i did not have any goal in my mind i was just working uh, towards my health that is good but i wanted to make a difference through it that's when in the end of june i met this uh, wonderful and passionate person dheeraj who happened to come from bombay and he was part of uh, bombay run, uh, running community since 2 uh, to 3 years and he had this vision of jodhpur runners in mind and he had uh, some things that is logo and uh, the concept in place that's when i joined hands with him and we had a team of four people and uh, we started with uh, 10 people in the first session and now we have a membership of uh, 800 people and we have a follower base of around 2000 people on instagram wow all in the last couple of months uh, yeah all in last 5 months i must say and uh, this started very small but this has impacted uh, not only our health but also the health of so many people in jodhpur and in my city uh, being a very laid back and a lazy city people love eating fried stuff here uh, to get to convince people to get up in 5 uh, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and come to run and improve their lives it it was very challenging but uh, at the end of the day when we when we know that we are successfully turning so many people's life uh, it's it's really satisfying wonderful and and you know i'm sure uh, first of all the figuring out marathons during pandemic you know forget laid back people convincing people to do running during these times uh, adhering to protocols uh, there are a lot of things that go behind organizing marathon especially in times like these right so have there been some of uh, some of hands on experience learnings that you've received even from this experience Yeah, sure. So, as I mentioned, we had a wonderful team of four, and uh, and and we are also supported by twenty to thirty people who selflessly volunteer for this particular thing. As in, when we grew, uh, we started organizing events. We started collaborating with uh, with the local government, uh, collaborating with various corporate organizations, uh, uh, local uh, FM like Radio Mirchi, and we started organizing marathons. Uh, so this. this imbibed uh, and this involved rather fair share of uh, licensing fair share of marketing arranging funds and since we were not for profit organization and from day one we had this in our mind that we won't take a single penny from any person uh, in form of membership so th- that sort of created a need to go out there in the corporate world in the government organizations and ask for funding for a good thing and then slowly steadily we we, we uh, people started approaching us and that's how uh, we Uh, we we came to organize two full fledged marathon with almost 500 people in participation now it seems very uh, very less a number normally but in a pandemic situation to be able to do this is a very daunting task and it involved a lot of planning and uh, uh, mainly as you said that in in covid situation where we are giving the message by running of health and immunity we can't really break the protocol so from day one we had it in our mind that uh, we would we would distribute masks to everybody uh, from our social media we would uh, spread the message message of uh, social distancing and uh, we had our volunteers wonderful set of volunteers passionate people who took care micro managed everyone and ensured that everybody followed social distancing and the covid protocols so clearly some leadership level, uh, lessons out there huh? it teaches a lot of leadership to do a social entrepreneurship and mainly when you have a team whereby you know people are people have different way of functioning uh, there are culturally different set of people uh, together for a same objective sometimes it's very challenging also to uh, because you have to hear out everyone 
and then you have to uh, sort of uh, take everybody's views into accounts and you have to work in in a collaborative manner which teaches a lot uh, uh, in the business end as well a lot of patience a lot of patience <laughs> wonderful so since you spoke about uh, you know manchester business school where you'll be headed super soon um tell us a little bit about the incubator wing that is ha- that it has and uh, we recently saw on social media that you and your team won uh, one of the competitions under the wing called the big ideas competition the, the bright and ideas the bright ideas competition so i'm just intrigued what is that all about so uh, alliance uh, manchester business school Uh, the university of manchester has this wonderful uh, masood entrepreneurship center which is an incubator kind of an organization and uh, it is sort of an organization which gives people and uh, promotes the ideas for the people and gives them hands on experience uh, as far as uh, business incubation or venture uh, venturing any uh, startup is concerned uh, they inter alia they organize a lot of events uh, to a lot of competitions so as to give platform to young entrepreneurs to put forth their ideas and then once they like the ideas when you once you win those competition you get some seed money to uh, translate your ideas into reality uh, i teamed up with people on zoom because of course uh, uh, it it was a covid it is a covid world and uh, i collaborated with the uh, Uh, my own uh, college mates and we brainstormed uh, an idea we presented an idea in form of a write up and a poster it was a three round event uh, we had to go through and at the final round we had to present our idea uh, and uh, uh, this this entire this entire uh, uh, journey was very enriching at the end of which we of course won some seed money and we won this recognition of uh, the winners of bright ideas competition and um, so so it primarily is that you bring a problem and you find a solution which is profitable at the same time so it's you're solving a problem and you're making money out of it yeah so it is basically uh, we, we are asked that uh, there has to be a problem existing and how you're solving this problem at the same point of time you're making money and you're on the growth trajectory all these things if satisfied and the idea is lucrative then uh, you get some points how interesting and uh, tell me your other team members since you were on zoom where were they from so uh, we had a team of four one person was from malaysia one person was from japan one person was an indian uh, uh, in uk uh, and uh, it was fairly a very multicultural team so apart from uh, the business concepts and brainstorming on ideas we also learned about uh, so many cultures uh we networked and uh, we became good friends also wow that's amazing and I'm, i'm sure you'll meet them in the campus sure we look forward to <laughs> that's damn nice so uh, has the lawyer experience helped you in any way in the last few years definitely i think uh, being a lawyer uh, so uh, from day one when when people asked me that why why would why, don't you regret or uh, don't you feel that uh, uh, you know uh, you had a formal training and then you worked as a lawyer uh, when you change your profession i always tell them that uh, this this journey of being a lawyer is so enriching that it teaches you so many skills which 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 are hands on any of the experience that uh, that you take on in the life be it any profession uh, the skills such as analytical mindset uh 360 degree understand comprehensive understanding of things attention to detail you know we have interned as a lawyers and uh, when and, and worked also as a lawyer as as lawyers and as in when we draft anything our seniors uh, correct us to the tune of a full stop and that develops a sense of perfection and uh, strive striving to be perfect or the best uh, in del- delivering to our clients now tell me shreya isn't this uh, needed in business isn't this needed needed in any of the profession and this is one thing that uh, we 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 develop uh, as uh, uh, you know as we study law yeah absolutely why don't you give us one example of how these skills came in handy probably in the fm fmcg sector for that matter sure uh, so uh, when i started working in fmcg sector the first thing which happened was that uh, when i talked to uh, my partner uh, that time he was my potential partner uh in 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 our tier 3 city uh getting into contracts and agreements is not the norm right the first thing i did after getting into a partnership with him 
supposed to sign a, a, a deed or sort of come to an agreement, written agreement. This protected my interest and his interest also. Moving forward, uh, of course, that is something that I, I imbibed as a lawyer. If I would not be a lawyer, this would not uh, have been thought. Moving forward, uh, we export regularly, right? So there are so many uh, laws uh, which uh, encompass the uh, the export of rice. I constantly update uh, him with with those laws, and it has and and has tremendously changed the way we work. Also, in terms of communication, we are very uh, we we are very particular in uh, communicating uh, with our clients, and this is what I bought. Uh, into any business that I I went, be it Jodhpur Runners, be it uh, my rice business, I always communicated with media, with with clients, and strive for perfection in those communication. That sort of skills or incidents uh, came in handy uh, when I transitioned from a lawyer to entrepreneur. Very very well put. Thank you for sharing that, Satyam. Um, so Satyam in his first year in 2010 uh, versus Satyam in 2020, what are you most proud of? Oh, that's a good question actually uh there's a lot that has changed but i would say that uh, uh the satyam of 2020 is more adaptive of changes uh has uh, learned how to come out of his comfort zone because uh, I- i'll tell you something when i transitioned from being in tier 3 city to my college it was going out of my comfort zone as i embarked upon the journey to be a lawyer when i was settled in my job and i uh, saw a, pro- a promising career then i came back to my hometown and it was in turn something which was out, uh, going out of my comfort zone now that i am in a, a social setting of my city going to an mba and going to a global level is is another round of uh, getting out of my comfort zone so it's it's my life being you know out of my comfort zone and and, and trust me i'm loving it and this is what has uh, this is what these 10 years has taught me that's amazing uh, so so i'm just wondering you know you you seen the life as a lawyer then you transitioned in a way for for your mother's business into the wellness industry then fmcg industry and then something around you know uh, health and uh, you know running so it's pretty much that you don't shy away from experimenting different fields however your purpose kind of remains the same that i want to do something of my own so uh, do you have anything in mind that what is it that you really want to do post your global mba or is that something you're going to just go with the flow and figure it out so uh, as far as my objective is concerned i surely want to stay in fmcg industry that being said you have to be really flexible and agile when you go uh, when you go for a global career uh, the reason that i i, I took my mba is because that i would I, w- i would like to be surprised with what my potential is or what is there out in market so with a with a pre meditated objective i am really open to anything and uh, one thing is that, uh, that i want to do something of my own i want to entrepreneur something where when how is something that uh, that will be clarified during my journey which is full of surprises <laughs> brilliant and um, any advice for those wanting to kind of take the entrepreneurial route definitely uh, I, you know as i said uh, there are so many skills as lawyer that you imbibe so never ever shy away from changing your path because the lawyer in you is to stay and is to give you benefit in whatever walk of life you are and for for those who are in two minds uh, because they have studied law and because they have uh, taken up uh, upon a journey to work as a lawyer please don't shy away to uh, to change your career if you feel so because uh, you, at the end of the day you live only once and therefore i request you to take a take that leap of faith even if you fail isn't failure the first step to success and that is the way to go wonderful and what is one piece of advice to young law students who are still studying young law students i would i, I would definitely tell you guys to participate uh, in so so uh, i i think that uh, my my pre law experience was at law is theory but believe me there is nothing as pragmatic as uh, you know going through journey of being a lawyer so you have moots you have internships you have so many parallel courses you have your uh, clubs in the in, in the college 
you have access to the lecturers you have access to uh, the eminent lawyers please uh, you know have an immersive journey and please uh, involve yourself in all those tasks rather than just sitting with the book and reading it because being a lawyer is not just uh, reading the letter of law but it is living that th those times and developing that mindset in you which uh, which motivates you to think logically very very well put thank you thank you for sharing that satyam and uh, thank you for daring to act differently um <laughs> i think i think that's that's a given to you and um uh, it it's been it's been so brilliant because you know um being being this our last finale um actually there is something little that i do want to bring up uh, there's this quote and i'll probably paraphrase where they say that uh, life is unfolding with every step you take uh but it is fulfilled by every choice you make and i think that's pretty been much wonderful been the yeah that's been the summary of your life and i think all our direct stories for that matter and it's so beautiful to see that you know everyone's panning out into their own journeys but at the same time it it works out the same way for us you know so thank you for sharing that absolutely and shreya i i would take a minute and say that uh, i have been closely observing uh, and listening to all the day to act uh, a stories and it is so enriching and so refreshing to know that people from all walks of life who had their formal training in law are making their mark in so many professions be it social media be it entrepreneurship be it starting a small business and it's 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 so refreshing to hear their experience and i think kudos to you and your team to uh, having thought this wonderful thing of uh, uh, day to act the name itself suggests and inspires a lot of people and prospective students maybe to take a leap of faith and who knows uh, by this uh, stint of yours or by this i, I hope it's recurring is recurring thing of yours uh, you inspire so many people and see transformations in life so really thank you uh, for for this initiative also that's that's really sweet thank you so much and that is that is extremely encouraging and on that note a big shout out to our team which is the radical stimulus neha spark plug tanisha and our really sweet intern vrishti uh, who's been handling our social media platforms also on behalf of the gray matter team i would just take a moment and wish you and our audience a merry christmas and a very very happy new year um it's it's been a fabulous journey in 2020 and uh, um this is me shreya signing off with satyam and um, we shall meet again like satyam said this is not a stint it's going to continue for long uh, we shall meet you next year in 2021 with more fun and loving stories thank you so much good thank, thank you, you so much shreya thank you everyone i wish you all the best bye thank you take care